Hello, good evening. Sky News understands that a Scottish parliamentary committee has concluded that First Minister Nicola Sturgeon did mislead Parliament. Holyrood's harassment committee has reached the conclusion by a majority vote ahead of the publication of its final report. It will significantly increase pressure on Miss Sturgeon to step down. But in the last hour, a spokesperson for the First Minister issued this statement. The First Minister told the truth to the committee in eight hours of evidence and stands by that evidence. It is clear from past public statements that opposition members of this committee had prejudiced the First Minister at the outset of the inquiry and before hearing a word of her evidence. So this partisan and selective briefing before the committee has actually published its final report is hardly surprising. Well, let's head to Holyrood. Join our Scotland correspondent, James Matthews. So, James, MSPs on this committee voting five to four that she did give an inaccurate account of that, that now infamous meeting. Yeah, I mean, I mean that Scottish Government uh, statement speaking about uh, a partisan and selective briefing, uh, I'm bound to say they've selected the most salient point in all of this for many, and that is the question of whether or not Nicola Sturgeon this misled famous? the Scottish Parliament. Um, now, the, the background is uh, a government investigation into Alex Salmon and a meeting between Salmon and Sturgeon at her house on the 2nd of April 2018. Alex Salmond went to that meeting with his legal adviser. They both said Nicola Sturgeon offered to intervene in this government investigation. She categorically denied that. Uh, and this committee, they focused on her written submission. And she said, I made clear to him that I had no role in the process and would not seek to intervene in it. I took no action as a result of this meeting. So she says, I had a meeting. I absolutely did not seek to intervene. The committee take a different view. They think uh, that, that doesn't square with corroborated evidence effectively by two different individuals, one of whom said that he heard Nicola Sturgeon say, if it comes to it, I will intervene. So they have concluded that Scotland's First Minister has misled that committee and in doing so has misled Parliament. Crucially, perhaps, Jonathan, they don't use the word knowingly. They don't say that she knowingly misled the parliament. Now, that word knowingly is important because in terms of breaching the ministerial code, um, that's the ground for any breach, to knowingly mislead the parliament. And if there is a breach of the ministerial code by a minister, they are expected to resign. Let me read you what this committee has voted on by a majority in terms of finding that Nicola Sturgeon has misled parliament. It says... The committee notes there is a fundamental contradiction in the evidence in relation to whether at the meeting on the 2nd of April 2018 the First Minister did or did not agree to intervene. Taking account of the competing versions of the event, the committee believes that she did in fact leave Alex Salmond with the impression that she would, if necessary, intervene. This is corroborated by Duncan Hamilton, who was also at the meeting. Her written evidence is therefore an inaccurate account of what happened and she has misled the committee on this matter. This is a potential breach, they say, of the ministerial code under the terms of section 1.3c. Remember Nicola Sturgeon's written statement, very certain that she did not seek to intervene. Have a listen to what she said in oral evidence when she was asked about that. From the minute I saw the, the letter, I knew that it would not be appropriate for me to intervene. I probably was trying to, you know, soften that for him, maybe from his accounts, I softened that too much. I was also thinking about, you know, in, in real time, um, you know, is there anything I have to do? Do I, do I have to report this to anybody? So all of that was going through my head um, as we were, were having this discussion. And But I did not intervene because for the reasons I set out very vehemently to to Margaret Mitchell, I don't think that would have been appropriate for for me to do. 
And James, plenty of reaction coming in already in the last few minutes. The leader of the Scottish Conservatives has repeated his calls for Nicola Sturgeon to resign. Uh, he's tweeted the committee will publish its findings in the coming days and we will wait for that report. But we have already detailed that Nicola Sturgeon lied to the Scottish Parliament and for that she must resign. All we're waiting for is uh, confirmation. Uh, what do you make of that? Yeah, that's not, that's not surprising from Douglas Ross. I think that will be echoed across the opposition benches. I think the way it will play out, Jonathan, is... Uh, well, uh, actually, I think we've got a taste of it from that Scottish Government spokesperson. They will try to rubbish this committee and rubbish the findings uh, of this committee. They may have a job, uh, I'll say, because, you know, we're reporting at the moment one finding on the fact that they think... Nicola Sturgeon misled Parliament. There are, there's much, there's a lot in this report. Um, and stay tuned for more in terms of what they think about Scotland's First Minister and her performance uh, throughout this matter, not just on that specific meeting and the specific instance they think of her misleading Parliament. There's other stuff. There's other stuff about um, the history. This is a woman who uh, worked right next to Alex Salmon for many years, described him as her inspiration and mentor. Expect to hear more about the history, knowledge or not, of uh, inappropriate behaviour. We heard some of that around the office of the former First Minister. Inappropriate behaviour, who knew what and when. So there's more. There's more to come. There'll be more in the full report when it's published next Tuesday at 8am in the morning. Don't forget, its remit was to look at what went wrong in that government investigation. So the good that will come of this will clearly be to sort out the weaknesses in that particular government har harassment policy. But the fallout politically clearly focuses on Nicola Sturgeon now. In Hollywood, thank you very much.